Guys, y'all look back there at Desi real quick and just give her a quick hand right there. Yeah. Now, the, y'all see Desi's working off this camera in the back of the sanctuary. So uh, be camera aware. Our Mevo is down, but we've got a really good substitute today. So, and I'm, I'm great with you just being uh, that is normal. But if you stand in front of that camera, guess what? It's going to get a great live feed shot of you on Facebook, all right, and stuff. So, uh, anyway. (laughs) Oh, God, we just love you, Jesus. It's been a hectic morning here, Father. But thank you for your provision, God. Uh, And like, uh, uh, we just really want to come praise your name. And, Father, there's nothing that can separate us or keep us from you and your love, Lord. And you have proven that over and over again. If you just proved it again this morning, Jesus. So thank you for joining us, God. Your Holy Spirit be here right now. We love you. It's in your name we pray. And everybody said amen. You guys stand up. I think that you'll know this song. Y'all sing it out loud. and grab a seat.
Ooh, good morning, y'all. Hope y'all are doing all right this morning. Uh, I got some announcements for y'all. Uh, we've got our church conference coming up Sunday, February 5th, right after our worship service. And uh, if y'all don't know what that is, we're voting on our bylaws that we'll run our church on once we're done voting. Every uh, church member gets a vote and is encouraged, is encouraged to attend and vote. And uh, our copies of the bylaws are on the front table in the foyer. Uh, we're starting a new Philippians Bible study Tuesdays at 1 p.m. starting January 31st. Yeah. Uh, also on February 5th, we got the Dog Bowl. And that's uh, uh, our youth versus adult flag football game. Everybody's welcome to come out. Uh, we're just going to have a fun time. We're going to grill burgers and uh, hot dogs and enjoy each other's friendship and community. Uh, we got our sweetheart banquet dinner at uh, the Red Zone Cafe on Friday, February 10th, and that's at 6, right? 6 o'clock. Uh, please join me in our uh, St. Matthew's Creed. At St. Matthew, we are a Christ-centered family of grace where all are wanted. We are committed to becoming who Christ says we are, growing, living, sharing God's love, one relationship at a time. As we prepare our hearts for worship, let us listen to his word. Uh, please bow your heads and join me in our opening prayer. Uh, dear Lord, uh, thank you for bringing us all here today to worship together as a family. Uh, and I just uh, pray to, that you clear our minds tonight, today, Lord. And as uh, Todd uh, gets up here in a little bit and starts preaching, I pray that his words latch on to somebody in here today. And that they do something to them. The, for the change them for the better, Lord. I pray that uh, that we could all find a sense of community in here this morning, even if it's 
if it's just the smallest thing, Lord. <clears throat> I think uh, sometimes we need a reminder just how vast you are, Lord, and how we there's nothing we can do to get away from you, and there's nothing we can do to get away from you, Lord. And <clears throat> that's pretty sweet. <laughs> uh, but thank you, Lord. Amen. Good morning. It's a joy to be with you this morning in the house of the Lord. And if you will join me with the hymn of praise, number 67, We Thy People Praise These, and please stand. Or faith, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated and turn to your hymnals of Number 368, My Hope is Built, our hymn of inspiration.
We're going to have a little bit of uh, communal prayer time, and we're just going to start with some silence this morning. We do want to um, say our special thanks that we have technology that's working this morning and that we have a pastor that knows what to do with technology. So if you're like, what do I have to be thankful for this morning? We are live. We have this clicker that's working. Lots of good stuff to be thankful for. Dear Heavenly Father, just thank you, thank you, thank you for being here with us. And we just ask that um, as we come in here this morning that we just remind ourselves, we remind our each other that we belong to you and that uh, we are here. And we are thankful that somebody uh, shared you with us. We thank you for this place. We thank you for our technology. We thank you for our pastor and Stephanie and Desi and Wendy and all the behind the scenes people that make all of this happen. We thank you that we're um, comfortable in here this morning. And we know that uh, sometimes you want our hearts to be uncomfortable so we'll grow. But we just thank you that we can be here in this comfortable place. We have sweet people that we know that are looking for jobs, Lord, and we just lift them up. and. Pray for those future employers, and we pray for them that you'll prepare their hearts and minds. And even as we know some people who are starting jobs, we just ask that you'll give them the physical and mental strength to be able to do just a fantastic job at those locations. We pray, Lord, we've got people that we know with, with heart issues. We've got Don Ball, and we've got Ricky Moyers, and we just um, ask that you'll take care of those physical hearts, and we pray that you'll take care of those spiritual hearts as well. And and we we have um, sweet people that we love that are struggling with depression, that are in the midst of big spiritual battles, and we just pray that you will help us to stand in the gap for them, know what to say to them, know how to pray for them, and just pr ask that you'll help us to be th that kind of a priesthood of believers that can be there for other people. And now we just pray together that prayer that's the um, ultimate example for us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you, Pat. It's a good prayer time. Whoa! <laughs> that now that these are not my new boots, so, uh, <laughs> Mike, I can run. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I ask our ushers to come down to take up our offering and uh, uh, while we're still standing so we can give some money today. So y'all come on down, guys. Thank y'all. Uh, guys, thank y'all. We had a great time at our leaders' gathering. Didn't y'all, everyone that went, I mean, that's just raise your hand if you went to the leaders' gathering yesterday. Listen, if you, if you look around and you see those hands raised, you have a question about anything, you need prayer, or uh, you just want to hang out, these guys are here for you. So thank y'all for coming and all that helped with that. Uh, Lord, we just want to give you thanks right now, Father. Jesus, we love you, God, and we really, really, really thank you for that. When we do stumble in life, like I stumbled getting here, Father, that you catch us and you hold us, Father, and you make us whole again, God. And so it's in all that that we can give thanks for the way that you have provided for us and are providing for us and will provide for us, God. Bless every cent that goes into uh, this, offer, this offering plate today that it may be turned into your kingdom work, Jesus. Everybody said, amen, amen. Um, let's hit the next slide. We're going to learn this song, man. As the children come up, let's sing this together. Are y'all ready? I am the church. You are the church. We are the church. building 
The church is not a steeple. The church is not a resting place. The church is a people. I am the church. You are the church. We are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world. Yes, we're the church together. Isn't that a great song? Yay! Hey, guys, what's going on? Hi, Riley. Hi, Tank. Hi, Alea. What's up? Oh, let me see this. Look at this, what what uh, Alea gave me, right? Oh, you, you just let me look at it, right? Okay, yeah. All right, I'll give it back to you, okay? Sunday school photos. Oh, I wonder who's in here. Wow, look at all those great photos right there. You guys are, y'all are so active and having fun in children's church. Look at how great this is. Good. Are y'all going to look at this today at children's church? Yeah. Well, this is really awesome here. Thank you very much for sharing that with me. Um, you know what? Let's read some scripture together. And I just want you to look up to Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 5. All right, church family, this is what the sovereign, here we go. Ready? One, two, three. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath into you, and you will come to life, right? You know, I want to tell you a story. Uh, the, Ezekiel had this great vision, and he dreamed that he was on this, I don't know if it was a battlefield or if it was in a graveyard, but there were dry bones everywhere. And the Lord spoke to him and said that. Ezekiel, you know what? I'm going to, who can, can, who can bring those bones to life? And Ezekiel answered him. He said, uh, Lord, uh, I can't, but you can. And I just got to thinking about that, about spaghetti. You guys love spaghetti? Who likes spaghetti? Yay! Oh, me too, man. I love spaghetti. Let's eat some spaghetti right now. Y'all ready? Okay, who wants some spaghetti? Anybody? You want, you want some spaghetti? Okay, here you go. Yeah, there you go. All right. Let's see how it goes. Oh, that is so bad. Riley says, it's so good. She likes raw spaghetti. Really, ma'am? That's great. There's something wrong with this spaghetti. You know what? You need it cooked. That's right, Tank. Way to go. Yeah, that's good. You know what? So we'd boil some water, and then we'd put the spaghetti in there, and we would let it uh, boil for nine minutes. Not ten and not eight, but nine minutes. And then we'd take the spaghetti. Then do your parents ever throw it on the wall and see if it sticks? Mine either, okay? All right, so let's not do that at home, all right? Somehow you're going to know that it's done, right? Is this done spaghetti? Is it cooked? No, it's not. It's hard, and something needs to happen to it to take it from being hard to making it soft. Guess what? Sometimes we get into hard things in our life, and they are just so, so tough. Maybe someone's being mean to us. Or maybe we're having a bad day and we're being mean to them. Maybe someone hurt our feelings, you know. Or maybe we just woke up on the wrong side of the bed and we don't know why, but we just feel kind of crabby, you know. Yeah. You didn't get much sleep last night? I didn't either, Tank. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, but look at all these. There can be all kinds of hard things that happen to us. But guess what? I promise you this. God can make the bad things that happen to us better. Amen, church family? And all these big, big people over here, they know that because they have lived his promise in that, that God can make big, bad things that happen better. He even could take dry bones, and he could bring them back to life. And he can take our old hard selves, and he can bring us back to life too. So... I want you guys to take this spaghetti, all right? And I know that you're going to find something fun to do with it with Carmen right here, right? You know, and stuff. And, Briley, did you finish all your spaghetti? You ate all of that. Way to go. Y'all give Briley a hand. Wow, it's pretty tough, man. All right. Sorry, Ben. Shit, if that's all, not on the – okay, thank you. All right, all right. Right hand, left hand. We put our hands together. We're going to bow our heads. We're going to talk to Jesus with our hearts. Dear Lord, thank you that – we know we're going to have some bad things that happen to us in life. We know that we're going to be as, as hard and dry sometimes as this old spaghetti in this box. But you bring us alive with your word and with your spirit. And we love you. And everybody said, Amen.
Okay, y'all go to Children's Church. I love you guys very much, all right? I'm going to let Miss Carmen carry this to your, yep. Let's see if Miss Carmen can get up. That's right. Are you playing in the flag football game? Okay. All right. yeah, no Thank you, choir. Great job, Penny. Way to go, Wendy. That was a fun song right there, man. How did Moses make coffee? Okay, y'all heard that one. I heard it for the first time yesterday, so I thought that was a pretty good joke. But thank you so, man. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you guys stand. We're going to, well, I'll tell you what. On this scripture today, you can go ahead and stay seated because we're reading about 14 verses of this scripture today, okay? So Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 1 through 14, this is the valley of the dry bones. You guys read it out with me. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones, and he led me around among them. And behold, there were very, very many on the surface of the valley, and behold, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy over these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded and as I prophesied there was a sound and behold a rattling and the bones came together bone to its bone. And I looked and behold there were sinews on them and flesh had come upon them and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. 
Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are indeed cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you into the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people. And I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken, and I will do it, declares the Lord. May God add the riches of his blessings to the reading of his word today. This morning, I want to look at four truths, uh, four principles about waking up that God wants to bring to us in our daily lives. So here's the first one right here. Awakening begins when we realize that we actually do need to wake up. Let me say that again. Awakening begins when we realize that we do actually need to wake up. Now, I don't know if this vision that Ezekiel sees is an old horrific battlefield or just some kind of mass graveyard, but look, whatever it is, this is a place of death. And this is a place of despair, and it's a valley full of bones, full of very many bones, as Scripture told us, right, on the surface of this entire valley. And what he sees is layers and layers and layers of these bones. Death, 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 and more death. And what he sees is not just bones, but it said dry bones. It didn't just say that he saw dry bones, but it said very, very dry bones bones and not just kind of dead but deeply and desperately dead long time dead forever dead the scene that ezekiel sees is a vision guys this is a picture of absolute and radical hopelessness there is no chance for life in this valley there is no way out of this valley and there is no future whatsoever in this valley and i just wondered this morning church family I wonder where you may be experiencing that kind of hopelessness in your life today. I wonder where you may feel like there is no way out, that there is no way for your situation to ever change, that there's no hope maybe for your child to come to the Lord, that there's no hope for your marriage ever to be healthy and happy again, that there's no way that you will ever overcome that addiction or no way that you'll ever be forgiven for what you did. No way that, 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 that you'll ever get in shape, you know, or, or lose that weight or, or even be able to physically do the things that you once were able to do. There's no way that your life will ever be any different than it is right now. You know, something that really stands out to me here in Ezekiel chapter 37 verse 1 is that the hand of the Lord, it says, the hand of the Lord was upon Ezekiel. Ezekiel was brought to this valley of dry bones in the spirit, in the spirit of the Lord. Now, having read that, my question is, for us, are we willing to understand? Are we really willing to even acknowledge that God is with us, present with us in the valley, that God is with us in our brokenness, that God is with us in our deepest and darkest and most horrific place of struggle that we have ever known. God desires to meet us and lead us through this valley. And yes, you know what? Even sometimes he leads us to this valley because we have to get to a place, church family, of understanding and experiencing our radical and absolute need for God. Somehow, some way, we have to get to a place where we know that we know all the way in our knower that we cannot resurrect ourselves, 
We cannot save ourselves. We cannot make that which is dead come alive again ourselves. We cannot in and of ourselves do anything at all that brings about our own deliverance and brings about our own transformation. Now look, have you been to Barnes & Noble's self-help section lately? It's absolutely huge. I mean, there's just shelves and shelves and shelves of, of books there. And in our library, too, if you were to go to the self-help section, you would find thousands of books, you know. But let me tell you what self-help is. Self-help is a deception. And you know what? It's a lie which was first told from the snake in the original garden. Do you remember the serpent there in the garden? Did, he said, did God really say that? Did God really mean that? Do you really need to do what God says? If you listen to me and if you trust in yourself, then guess what? You're going to improve yourself. And how did the serpent tell him he was going to improve himself? said, well, then you will really be alive and you will what? You will become like God himself. Self-reliance, guys, was a lie at the beginning of creation, and it's a lie that has been dressed up in really pretty clothes in our seemingly self-sufficient age today. But make no mistake about it. Trusting in yourself, leaning on your own understanding, will always lead you to deception and to demise and to destruction. See, more than just know about the valley of dry bones, Ezekiel needed to see that valley and not just see it, but he needed to connect with it in his spirit and just not connect with it, but he needed to feel it as deep as he could feel. Ezekiel needed to move beyond the apathy and he needed to move beyond this mere acceptance of the death that is all around him. You know, one of the occupational hazards of living, you know, in exile 2,500 years ago and one of the occupational hazards, by the way, of living today in our postmodern post-Christian era is that we just shrug our shoulders sometimes and settle for the status quo. It, it, it is what it is. We hear that phrase a lot, right? Y'all hear that a lot? It is what it is, right? You know, or uh, you are who you are, or I am who I am, and you've just got to accept the inevitable, accept the things that the way they are is just the way that they are. You have to accept the divisiveness in our nation, accept the decline in our church, accept the deception of false narratives coming from all kinds of media and politicians and pastors and leaders, and accept the three deaths that I call them. You have to accept the physical death. You have to accept the relational death. And you have to accept the spiritual death. And with all that going on all around this church, we just shrug our shoulders and accept our dry bone reality is the one and only reality that we can ever know. There's an answer to that. Do we need awakening in our nation today, church family? Do we need awakening in our city today, church family? Do we need awakening in our church today, church family? Do we need awakening in our own hearts this morning, church family? Or are we at a place where we could care less about what is going on around us and what's going on inside of us. Now, I'm not talking about simply getting fueled up or angry or motivated or disagreeing with all that. I'm talking about getting to a place where our hearts are actually broken by the things that break God's heart. I'm talking about seeing our absolute and radical need for God's intervention and for God's deliverance and for God's resurrection in our own lives and in this world around us. Amen? Bill was a guy who was, when he was young, everything that he touched just seemed to turn to gold. He had a successful career. He had a beautiful wife and nothing but high hopes for his future. But Bill had unaddressed issues in his life, these deep toxic hurts from his childhood and and that stuff just started coming up he thought it was long gone but it began to creep into his heart and it began to creep into his mind again and guess what step by step and little by little bill went from one self-destructive choice to another self-destructive choice 
before Bill knew it, it's a country and western song, right? <laughs> his job was gone. His wife was gone. His dog was gone, right? And Bill was staring into his own version of a dry and desperate valley of dead and decaying bones. And in that valley, here's what Bill has. Bill has a choice, a choice to trust in himself, or he has a choice to fall on his face and say, help me, Lord Jesus. I know I can't, but I know that you can. And look, that is where awakening begins for our world. It begins when you and I get to that place of knowing that life must be different. When we get to that place of knowing that we know that He and He alone is our source for hope. Second point I want to talk about is that the awakening that God wants to bring in us and to us is rooted in the Word of God. It's rooted in the Word of God. The word that is repeated seven times in these 14 verses that we read is prophesy. Did y'all catch that? And you know what prophesy means? Prophesy means to speak and proclaim the word of God, the truth of God. So look at God's method here. God's method for bringing dry bones to life here in this valley is what? It's his word. It's his word. It is the same method that he used in Genesis 1 when he created the heavens and the earth at the beginning of time. Do you remember that? He spoke his word and those things came to be. And guys, I just think that there is power and there is creativity and there is life in the Word of God. But you know what? In Western Christianity, what we've done is we have mostly made Bible study a mere cognitive exercise that is all about acquiring knowledge or learning. But what's clear to me is Bible study is God's calling us to not just learn the Word of God, but guess what? To live it. To live it. Not to just hear it, but guess what? To heed to it. Here's another foundational principle that I want to give you this morning. So write this one down. And I did slide this one for you. It's not how much of the Bible you get into that matters. It's not how much of the Bible that you get into that matters. But it's the Word of God getting into you that makes all the difference in the world. Jesus said it in Matthew 28, 18 through 20. This is the Great Commission. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, doing his word. John 14, 15 says this, If you love me, you'll what? Keep my commandments. Do not just hear them. We don't just believe them. We don't just study them. We keep them. We do them. We obey His Word. And we live His Word. And here's what I know about the Word of God. Look at Hebrews or Isaiah chapter 55, 10 through 11. The rain and snow come down from the heavens and stay on the ground to water the earth. They cause the grain to grow, praise God, producing seed for the farmer and bread for the hungry. It is the, listen, same with my word. I send it out, and it always produces fruit. It will accomplish all I want it to, and I will prosper everywhere that I send it. Hebrews 4.12 says this about the word. For the word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and our desires. You know, when you're reading the great prophets of the Old Testament, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, Isaiah, you know, there is no shortage of the presence of the words of the Lord in their prophesying in their books. There is, however, as Amos 8.11 prophesied, listen to this. He said, a famine is coming, and this famine will be a famine of hearing and heeding the words of the Lord. Sound familiar today, right? Ezekiel 37, 4, Then he said to me, Prophesy over these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Hear and heed the word of the Lord. So guys, we have to pause right here. And we have to ask ourselves, 
just this question. How much time do we spend in his word each and every day? How much time? It's been estimated the average Christian spends at least two minutes a day in this book, which means the average Christian spends more time going to the bathroom, right, than they do reading the word of God. And here's what I want to challenge you to do today, all right? If you're not in a Bible reading plan or have a Bible reading plan, uh, I, I want you to start. It can be one chapter, it can be one paragraph, or it can be one verse. There's something more than what you're doing. Whatever it is, I don't care. But make a start with some kind of Bible reading plan. You need help with the Bible reading plan? If you're online, uh, chat in or email us uh, uh, or here in our sanctuary. Come up and talk to uh, uh, me or one of our leaders or, or just call us in the office and, and we, will, we will help you journey on a Bible reading plan. Whatever you decide, though, to read, however much of God's Word that you want to digest and get into, make sure that you stop and answer these four simple questions that I'm about to give you right here. And you know what? Even maybe journal these and write them down. Here's the first one. When you read that text and you select that text, ask this question, what does the text say about God? What does this text say about God? And then go to the second question if you, you read that, that, that verse or those couple of verses. What does this text say about me? Or what does this text, another way to put that is, what does this text say about mankind or about humanity? And then after you do that, go on to this third question and say, are there any commands in this text for me to follow? Are there any commands or directions given for me in this text for me to follow? And then the fourth question is the greatest question of all. What am I going to do with what it says this week? What am I going to do with what it says this week? Pretty simple, right? Those four questions, you know, and then go do it. The third thing is that the awakening that God wants to bring to us this morning, guess what it requires also? It requires the breath of God. Now, the Hebrew word for this here is ruach. So if you were to put, do y'all hear that? It even sounds like breath, doesn't it? Ruach. All right, I don't know. I can't say it right, you know. But it's supposed to have effect on there, right? But the ruach of God. And you know what? That is the very Holy Spirit of our Godhead. Ezekiel 37, 7 through 9. The restoration, the coming together of the bones. See all that right there? I mean, the structure is there, uh, and the form and the potential of life is just, it's right there, right? Uh, where there were once only bones now, guess what's existing? There are bodies. But guess what? There's still no life. There is still no life in those bodies. Just as in Genesis, guys, when we were created, God created our bodies into existence, but something else needed to happen, didn't it? It was his breath that he breathed into these bodies that gave them life and brought them to alive again. Do it again, Lord. Amen? Breathe your breath in us, Jesus, again, Lord. Do it again, Father. Give the dry bones of, of us, God, of our church, of, of our community, of, 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 our, of, our, of our city, of our nation, Father, of our world. Give my dry bones, Jesus. Give my dry bones, God. Uh, and give uh, uh, your dry bones out here. Give us resurrection breath of God's Spirit right now. Breath to breathe upon us and breathe deeply into us, Lord. We need it. Do it again, Lord. Please, Jesus, do it again. Finally, the last thing I'll say this morning, the awakening that God wants to bring to us involves us answering the foundational question of awakening that was asked in Ezekiel 37, verse 3, and it's this. We find the key question from God to Ezekiel and also the key question not only from God to Ezekiel, for God says, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, he said, uh, Ezekiel said, Oh, Lord God, only you know. Only you know. We find that same question asked then being asked to us right here, right now in our sanctuary. Ezekiel's uh, uh, response to that is great, you know. It's like, can, can, can I make, Jesus is saying, can I make the impossible possible? God's saying, can I bring the dead to life? God's saying, can I bring the lost to salvation? God's saying, can I bring healing and restoration to those who are broken and busted? God's saying, 
can I heal and restore that dead and dying relationship? And I love Ezekiel's answer. He said, Lord, it's up to you. <laughs> Lord God, only you know. Lord, you can do whatever you desire to do. There is no name it and claim it shouting here, right? You know, and, and there's no uh, possess it and, and roly, you know, uh, holy rolling kind of prayers going on right here. You see, God's not looking for easy believism in this. God is not looking for us to say all the right words to this question right here. He's not looking for us to follow some kind of magical get what we want formula here. What God is really looking for here in Ezekiel 37 is the same that God is really looking for here in the house of worship this morning, and it's this, our surrender. It's our surrender. Ezekiel's answer is not a compound answer. His answer that is coming from his world of desolation and exile is an answer that is more about his clear and certain acknowledgement of his own powerlessness. He has learned that it is God and God alone who is in control. It is God and God alone who is the Lord of all the words and the King of all kings. He has learned that what God says he will do. And he will do. He has learned that his one and only hope is the Lord God Almighty. Awakening comes, church family, when we surrender and we say, Lord, it's up to you. Lord, it's your call. Awakening comes as we surrender. It comes as we give ourselves, our lives, our future into his hands. Awakening comes as we clearly acknowledge that God is God and we are not. You know the difference between me and God is that God doesn't walk around all day playing like he's Todd, right, you know? He is God and we are not. Awakening comes as we acknowledge and confess that it's up to you. It is up to you, God. God, we know you love us. God, we know that you have the power to change us and the power to change our situation. God, we know that you don't just see us where we are, but you see us where we can be. God, we know that you're not out to harm us, but to heal us. We know that you're not out to destroy us, but to deliver us. We know that many of us have these dry, dry bones because of the choices that we have made in life. And we know, Lord, that, that some of us have found ourselves here because of something that has happened to us in life. But what we especially know, God, is that there is no way out of this valley of mess this valley of dry bones apart from you. And so, Lord Jesus, come. Come this morning. Come and put us together again. Come and breathe your Holy Spirit upon us again. You know, part of me thanks, guys, as we wrap up here and the, the praise band comes up, part of me thanks that what other choice do we really have in that valley of dry bones? I mean, you would think it might be obvious or evident to us, but you know what? It seems like people every day are making every other choice that they can make under the sun in that valley of dry bones. I love how Ezekiel's vision ends in Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 10. It says this, So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived. Y'all see that? And they lived. And they stood on their feet, an exceedingly great army. The result of awakening is that. It's an exceedingly great army. The result of awakening is it's never just individual renewal, guys. It's not just some sporadic popcorn revival that we attend that one person over here got it and one person way over there got it and the one person that came up got it, you know. The awakening that God wants to bring is a pervasive and transforming breakthrough of God's love on the whole of our society. But y'all, guess what? I have zero power to do that. I have zero power to do that. And guess what else? You have zero power to make that happen either. All I can do, all that you can do, is say yes, yes to his awakening of us yes to seeking him yes to trusting him yes to belonging to him yes to his powerful holy spirit coming in to our lives our true yes guess what 
it becomes so contagious that before we know it, where we were once in a valley of dry bones, it becomes an exceedingly great army of God's grace and God's love conquering this neighborhood, conquering this city, conquering this nation. I believe that, don't you? Conquering that with His presence and His purpose. Jesus, Your kingdom come and Your will be done on earth, on earth even as it is in heaven. Father, we love You, Lord. God, wake us up, God. Lord, we may not even realize the valley of dry bones that we are in right now. Make that evident to us. And Lord, teach us and and encourage us and show us and love us, God, that we don't have to live there. Father, that's not the way it's always supposed to be. That's not the way that it's always going to be. That is not our plot, plan, in life. And we are just stuck, Father. Because of you, we have your resurrection power, God. So, Father, breathe life into us, these very, very dry bones, Lord. We love you. Thank you for your son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. The altar's open. I love this song. Uh, Listen to the words and sing it out with him. Stand, and you're more than welcome to come up here and pray uh, as you feel that. In our hearts, Lord, in this nation, awakening, Holy Spirit, we desire awakening for you and you. Let your will be done in me. In your presence, in your power, awaken me for this moment, in this hour.
sun that shines awake my soul, awake my soul and sing. Darkness comes a light, awake my soul, awake my soul and sing like a rising sun that shines. Awake my soul, awake my soul and sing. Only you can raise a life. Awake my soul, awake my soul and sing. In our hearts, Lord, in the nation. God. Father, Lord, wake us up, God. Wake our nation up, Father. Lord, wake our city up. Wake our neighborhood up. Lord, wake us up, Jesus. Now go in the power, not as those old dry bones, but as a put together, living, loving body of Christ together again today, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And all of God's people said, Love you guys. Thanks for coming today. We have the copies of the bylaws out in the back. The ushers will point you towards there if you want to pick them up. You guys are awesome. See y'all. Have a great week. Thanks for joining us online.